Hey guys, Bird Dog John here. Just want to go over some brief configuration stuff when we're talking about latency on Bird Dog Cloud. Hopefully this will give you something to start on, give you a chance to test out your own network and understand kind of how to set up your endpoints and get them to talk to each other and get good performance out of them. So it de highly depends on how you have your computer configured, if you have hardware acceleration, if you have a graphics card and that sort of thing. Remember, uh, we can capitalize on quick sync uh, which is an Intel uh, graphics accelerator. And then we can capitalize on the NVIDIA accelerator, which is called NVINC. So uh, I have two uh, NVIDIA graphics cards in my machine that have some fairly good horsepower. And so hopefully I can give you an example of how this works and how to set this up. We'll talk briefly about configuration and a few other things, but I just wanted to give you a brief kind of overview and uh, hopefully it'll set you off on the right foot. Of course, you can always email me your questions afterwards at help at bird-dog.tv and we'd be happy to uh, field those questions for you. But this will give you a good idea as to how to get started. We're going to talk about connecting between endpoints and we'll talk about connecting to WebRTC. Um, I am USA support team right here uh, with the dual GPUs. I'm sorry, uh, with the dual GPUs. Um, be helpful if I showed you my desktop. I am uh, the USA support. I've got dual GPUs, so it shows both of them here in this little graphics. And then this is BirdDog headquarters. Uh, over in Melbourne, so in uh, Melbourne, Australia. So we've got a bit of a, a distance between us, but I am going to transmit, that's what this means, TX, transmit to Bird Dog headquarters. Okay, so I'm gonna click this little button here on the grid. I'm gonna select my encode, and we'll talk about this briefly, uh, how to set this up and, you know, a couple of the options that you should use. And then I'm gonna select my NDI source, which is my P200 camera, send them PTZ control and tally control, no audio. If you're not sending audio, it's important to click that. It actually helps reduce latency. So I'm not going to send them any audio. I'm just going to send them the picture. I'm going to use port 5555. And these items are fine. Uh, and uh, no packet drop is where I want to be. So uh, let's set this up and make this connection. So I'm going to click connect. It should pretty instantly uh, make the little chain link. And then uh, we're going to watch the actual data streaming over to Melbourne. So Melbourne. So uh, it's a 1080p 60 picture. And so here we go. We've got frames reporting on the other end at 60 frames. Uh, and it looks like things are being transmitted. Now, uh, the pieces that I really want to look at, and this is going to differ based on all of the, you know, different locations you're streaming to. So if you're streaming to like across town, that's different than if you're streaming to the other side of the world. So uh, right now, I have uh, some key things that I want to look at. Now, I'm going to refresh this page because for some reason there's a thing in front of it. The pieces that I want to really pay attention to is right here. Lost packets, drop packets, and resent. My bit rate was set to around 7. That's what my encode was, and that's where it's at. Uh, I've got zero lost packets and I've got zero drop packets. The drop packets, if you see those, that's pretty important. That means that you're asking your connection to do more than what it can do. But uh, the lost packets isn't really a huge deal. And what you really wanna look at is right here. I have lost two, but they have resent two. And so I've that's resulted in zero drop packets. So it's talking correctly, it's talking quickly, and uh, it seems to be working really well between our connection. The other piece that you want to look at is the round trip time. Now, if we were getting a lot of lost packets or we were getting drop packets, you would go here to the round trip time. And right now it's 310 milliseconds. And so what you do is you open up a little keyboard and you say 310. Oops, no, not that many. 310 times 2.5. That's 775. OK, so then I would go and I would edit my connection. Edit. And I would change the SRT latency to whatever the 2.5 is. So if, for example, you are getting um, you're getting some dropped packets, but your round trip time is only like 50 milliseconds. Well, we just say 50 times 2.5 and the result is 125. So we could put that in here as 125 and that could uh, Im improve things. That's kind of the baseline. Uh, for the most part, though, you know, it's going to be a higher rate. So it might be like 100 and let's say it's like 115 round trip time. So we times that by 2.5, say 290. So then we could go in here. We could say 290 needs to be the latent, the SRT latency expectation. And we can say save. It'll reconnect the two. 
and then watch your lost and dropped packet readout. Should be a lot lower, should be more consistent, and you should have a much better picture. Okay, that's how you make the connection. That's kind of how you finesse your system. If, though, you are getting no lost packets, no drop packets, no resend packets, you can lower that SRT latency. The default is 120, but you know, let's say 60. Let's see how it performs um, with, with an expectation of 60 milliseconds uh, SRT latency. We should see lost packets go up, technically, uh, but if it doesn't go up, we can lower that down again and really kind of finesse uh, that stream. So here, we're still not seeing any lost packets. Things are still running just fine. Round trip time is still 310, 312. All right, so I can open this up. I can say edit. Let's lower this down. Let's cut this in half again. Let's push it to the point where we start getting drop packets and it just can't keep up with us. So we're going to drop it down to 30. We're going to wait for the um, for the readout to come back and then we'll check it out again, see what it comes back as. And you can lower that down until you really start getting, um, you know, lost packets, drop packets, that sort of thing. So still at 0%. 30 is pretty good. Um, the round trip time is still the same, but it seems like we're, we're locked in here. We're not losing frames. It seems to be working fairly well. So over in Melbourne, they're getting that PTZ picture. Now let's talk briefly about configuration because I just kind of blew past that. Um, this is the configuration line right here. And as you can see, I've got a whole bunch that are available to me and my company. It is restricted to your company. So when we go here and we look at my configuration, you're going to see everybody's configuration because I'm an admin, but we can click on configurations. And what we want to do is say add configuration. And it's going to take us to a screen that looks like this. Here, we're going to name it. So we're going to say like test config one. I don't really care. You can type in any notes, you know, I'm testing something out. Bit rate, usually what I suggest is to start at seven and also make an additional one that's at five. And so here uh, it's listed at 10. I've already got one that's seven. So let's say five megabits. Variable bit rate uh, or constant bit rate. You can choose between the two and test what is going to be best for your setup. I like variable bit rate. It seems to be a little more flexible. I have NVIDIA graphics cards and so I can leverage the NVIDIA acceleration by clicking NVENC. If you have an Intel graphics card, you could um, make sure that it does quick sync, but you could leverage quick sync that way if you wanted. So my video encoder is going to be NVENC 264. Baseline profiles fine, presets default, GOP size 12, all of that doesn't really matter uh, too much for you. Whoops. You just need to know that they, uh, you know, you keep that and then this is kind of a baseline setup. So just know that GOP size can stay at 12, presets, default, baseline, that's fine. Uh, you don't have to change the owner. I have to change the owner because I'm an admin. So create configuration, test config one. And now I go back to my, uh, my matrix. And I can go back to my connection. And when I make a connection now, that configuration is going to appear in my drop down menu. So I can change it here. Say now it's going to be there. Look, it makes puts my little notes right here that I made, right? Uh, single, and let's make this re let's reconnect this. Um, my baseline tests are usually five megabits and seven megabits, like I said. It's tailored to your system, though, so you need to decide uh, what sort of encode you have. You know, if you've got accelerators, what sort of bandwidth you have on your upload speeds. That's going to play a big factor. Um, I have thirty megs up and so i can do five seven ten and that seems to be fairly consistent but seven is kind of the threshold we're finding and so somewhere in that ballpark is a good place to start testing all right we've made a connection i see that the readback is here zero lost packets zero drop packets Our my round trip time all the way to australia is 100 or three three ten still got lots of the buffer left doesn't seem to be too many errors uh and we're not throwing any errors here um one thing I should note is if you do see a little red asterisk mark up here, that means that the the source, NDI source, is deviating beyond 10% from the SRT encode. So you've got an issue with processing power, your uh, configuration isn't set up correctly, um, you don't have fast enough upload speeds, it could be any of those types of things. All right, last thing I want to do, I'm going to dump this, you can delete the connection here, 
and I want to show you the WebRTC configuration. So I'm coming transmitting from me to WebRTC. So I click on this. I want this to be a single. I want this to be a one to one. So we're using Xersus. I'm going to send my P200 camera. There's no audio. The bit rate I want to send is five megabits. And then um, default is fine. And this is an NDI source. So I hit connect. I let this talk to the WebRTC uh, website. Give it a few minutes to connect. You're not going to see anything in the transmit data until you actually open the video stream. So now we're going to go here. We're going to say WebRTC streams. We're going to open this in a new tab. Whoops, sorry. WebRTC and put in my secret passcode. I'm going to hit enter. No, don't save any of this stuff. Look, my bird dog stream is here. I can click start stream and it shows my stream. Now, this is actually quite quick. Like the, the latency on this is fast. And the reason why is because I have a good upload and this is just going to a website. So like probably like Amazon warehouse or something. So it's just going to the WebRTC website through Xersus, um, our Xersus trial. And it's really responsive. So if you were to bring in an NDI feed from a remote site and then send your post-production to WebRTC, the person you're interviewing on the other side could just watch it from this website. And it would be much faster than trying to send them back an NDI signal and having that being decoded in Studio Monitor or on a mini or something like that. Send it to WebRTC and it's much faster. It's fast enough to talk, have a talk conversation uh, and it's super responsive. So WebRTC is uh, a great solution if you're doing two-way conversation or or you need the person at the remote uh, site to watch the feed. So here's a good uh, example of that live in action. That's a nice clean image. We could lower the bit rate on this. Let's go back here. Now see, I'm actually watching the stream so you can see the transmission data being sent. But if I want, I can lower this down. Let's edit this. Let's let's experiment. Let's say two, save, close, go here. This will probably need to be reset. So I'm gonna, I've logged out. I'm gonna put in my password again. Now I just restarted this. So there's one that's still in cache and it will clear eventually, I'll clear, cleared right now. So now I can hit go. This is a two megabit stream. You can see the pixelation a little bit, but it's just as fast. Like it's so quick. So if you just need somebody to see it as a confidence monitor or to see you talking back to them, WebRTC is the way to go. And that's kind of as simple as it is. You can do two, you can do five, you can do seven megabits if you really wanted a nice clean picture. But my recommendation is keep it nice and light so that it's nice and fast and uh, it can you know be sent right back to the uh, the end user. Now the, the multi-broadcast version of WebRTC will give you the iframe, which means you can embed that in a website if you wanted to. So there is the option. Uh, if you want multiple people to watch the stream, you could embed it that way. But uh, that, okay, so that's just a brief overview of how WebRTC works. And again, when you're done with this stream, you dump it and it's done. Now, WebRTC, there's a free trial um, from Xersus and from Millicast. Reach out to us at help at bird-dog.tv. We'll get you the information you need. Sign up for a free trial at cloud2.bird-dog.tv and uh, sign up for a free cloud trial. I can help you get lined up with WebRTC stuff here at support and we'll get you up and running. Send any other questions that you have over to help at bird-dog.tv. I'll be happy to talk to you. If I can't answer those questions, I'll get you online with somebody who is an expert with cloud. Uh, if you're looking for pre-sales, shoot us an email at hello at bird-dog.tv and we will get in touch with you. That way also we can connect you with experts in the field who are implementing cloud on massive scales and having great success. So I hope this has been helpful. Brief little overview, probably way longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, but if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out. Take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you next time. Later.